As surely most, if not all of you, are aware of by now, the WWE has reinstated Hulk Hogan into their Hall of Fame and have apparently reached a new multi-year Legends contract deal with him to have him be back in the WWE family once again. You had to know there was an inevitability here. This was going to happen at some point in time. And when originally the WWE, you know, I don't remember them suspending him. I remember them terminating his contract. Whatever. Um, I talked about it back then. I didn't see what the big deal was from the WWE standpoint, key phrasing there, based off of their history, based off of the people that they had in their Hall of Fame based off of what that company had stood for and represented for so many years. I didn't see where all of a sudden this was such a big deal to them. Or screw the publicity that Hogan got for this. Screw the negative attention that comes with it. Why would they care now? And I still stand by that. But when you hear what Hogan said and just how truly bad it was, you know, for me, as somebody who grew up as a massive Hogan fan, you know, for a guy who was my favorite wrestler of all time, who frankly has meant so many things to me in my life personally, to hear him say something like that, it's just kind of earth shattering in a little bit of a way, if I'm being honest, because it's one of those things, uh, they stay your heroes until you meet them and then you might end up disappointed. This is clearly one of those cases. As somebody like me, dated black women my entire adult life, have a daughter by a black woman, black friends, you know, being about diversity and inclusion and fighting against racism, prejudice, discrimination throughout my life, the things that he said are the antithesis of who I am and who I represent. And it bothered me immensely to hear him say something like that and seemingly be more upset about the fact that it was recorded where people could hear it, not that he said what he said. And that has stuck in my crawl and continues to stick in my crawl. And it leaves me in a very awkward space. This is like, the dude is my favorite wrestler of all time. And he also said some really terrible, horrible shit that I don't agree with and I don't stand by and I cannot justify in any way, shape, or form. And I completely and totally understand where you've got a lot of people, black and white, that say, screw Hogan. I don't want anything to do with them. The WWE should have nothing to do with them. And I can't believe they're bringing this old fossil back into the fold. For what? Why? What purpose? I get it. And ultimately, I'm not here to tell you how you should feel about it. Because it's the way that you feel about it. And if it bothers you, and it upsets you, then you have every right to feel that way, because what he said should bother and upset all of us. I know it doesn't, but it should. And... As much as we try to make this a very black and white thing, and I don't necessarily mean the racial component of it, we try to make this world as black and white as we possibly can and, and say it's either this or it's that, and there's absolutely no wiggle room, no middle ground, no in-between, no anything else, no margin of variance at all. The reality is that the world is incredibly gray, and there's very little true black and white. And for me, that's how I look at the whole situation with Hulk Hogan. It is an incredibly gray space for me. Because on the one hand, you're talking about a guy that said racist things in multiple ways and seemed to be comfortable doing it, indicating that he's had a history of saying that in private over the years. Might not have been something he expressed publicly. Might have even been something he was okay with palling around with a Mr. T or Muhammad Ali or whoever the case might be because they were famous black and they weren't just regular black. You know, I don't know. 
but I know based off of what I saw, what I heard, I should say, that it seemed like it wasn't the first time he said it. And it didn't seem like it was that out of the norm for him to say it and think it and ultimately, unfortunately, believe it. And I would love nothing more than to be able to tell Terry Bollea, go F yourself, screw you, I'll look to people that believe more like I do and hold them on a pedestal, I'm done with you. In a very black and white world, that's the way it would be. But again, it's not a black and white world. It's a very, very gray space, a very gray world that we live in. And it most certainly is for me. Because I referenced a little earlier, Hulk Hogan has meant so much to me personally. And this is not just markdom. This is not exaggeration. This is not bias towards Hulkster or anything like that. It's true. And if you give me a couple of minutes, I'll explain what I mean, and I'll ex hopefully help you understand why I'm so conflicted about what Hogan said, Hogan being gone from the company, being back in the fold with the company. I've been a wrestling fan for over 30 years. And flat out, the number one reason I ever started watching wrestling, liked professional wrestling, then loved professional wrestling, and honestly, still have the habit of wanting to continue to watch professional wrestling to this day as Hulk Hogan. That's simple. To expand upon that, because of professional wrestling, so many positive things have happened throughout the course of my life. I think about the number of friends that I have made over the years because of professional wrestling. That wouldn't have happened, perhaps, without Hulk Hogan. I think about the number of great moments I've been able to see in professional wrestling over the years. Some involving Hulk Hogan, many others that didn't. That all, again, may not have happened if it wasn't for Hulk Hogan. So I think about all those memories and I think about all those great times and all the fun that I've had over the years, even if you don't think I've had that much fun, believe me, I have, especially over three plus decades. It all started with Hulk Hogan. So many friends made over the years, like I said, because of it. Good friends, quality friends. I look at Tasteless Tony T and Mr. Rout. Now, I knew Tony before we started watching wrestling together, but wrestling and watching wrestling together was a way that we really bonded. And while I choose not to speak for him, Hulk Hogan is a major reason for him as well that he got into professional wrestling when he was a little tasteless one. Mr. Rout, same thing, huge Hogan guy. He became a wrestling fan in part because of Hulk Hogan. As a result, when I started hanging out with Tony and we watched wrestling together, eventually Mikey came along as well. So I became friends with both of them. They became friends with me because of professional wrestling and that all ties back into Hulk Hogan. I later on, meet B-Rad, Metal D, Marvelous Mark, all the other people that we were able to find and meet and interact with there in Iowa, watching professional wrestling. That wouldn't have happened for me, very possibly, without Hulk Hogan. Late in 2010, we decided to do something different, something crazy, and try and have some fun. We started a YouTube wrestling show called The Off The Rope Show. Some of you may remember. Some of you may not care. But we had enough passion and love for professional wrestling to talk, to talk about professional wrestling and specifically share our viewpoints and thoughts and perspective on professional wrestling that may not have ever been there if it wasn't for Hulk Hogan. I think to 2011, when in the course of the beginning stages of doing the Off The Rope Show, 
I met somebody. Her name was Ashley. And after two years of doing a long distance relationship, I moved out here to Richmond, Virginia in 2013. We wouldn't have known each other from a hole in the damn ground. Probably never would have interacted or met at all if it wasn't for the Off the Rope show. If it wasn't for professional wrestling. If it wasn't for Hulk Hogan. And while she and I are no longer together after seven years, I can also say that while that didn't ultimately go well, there were good things that came out of that. I was able to move to a new place, a new part of the country, and have different life experiences and do, see new places that I may very well have never been able to see in my life if it wasn't for coming out here. I'm living in a house now, not sharing walls, no apartments, no anything like that, exclusively for the first time since I was seven years old. Me in a house. All those years of apartment living and living in holes and all of that. That's gone, hopefully never to return. Coming out here, having that relationship for almost seven years. You know, I think about the fact of, I wouldn't have the two dogs if it wasn't for that. I'm probably in the best place I've ever been career-wise because of my move out here. There is a lot of good that happened, even in the face of some of the negative and some of the bad and some of the things that didn't ultimately end up going so well that came out of coming here to Virginia five years ago. And all of that can be traced back to Hulk Hogan. Remember how much fun y'all used to have watching the Off the Rope show and all the crazy crap we did and Smokey and him talking about Mark motherfucking Henry? None of that happens if not for Hulk Hogan. And all these years later, sometimes you guys like me, sometimes you really don't. Sometimes you watch me, sometimes you really don't. But I think about all of the great interactions and great people that I have been pleasured and honored to have been able to meet and talk to and interact over the years in a variety of different ways because of doing this show, doing this here on YouTube, and it all goes back to Hulk Hogan. So for me, and only me personally, I only speak for me, and you can say whatever you want about that. It's just not that easy to go tell him to kick freaking rocks. Because when I say Hulk Hogan has ultimately led to a lot of things happening in my life and a lot of good positive things happening in my life, that is an absolute fact. And you could say that's happenstance and circumstance and it could have potentially happened and you may be right and you could be totally ass wrong. The truth is we don't know. What I do know is that a lot of things have happened because of 30 plus years ago, I discovered Hulk Hogan, I discovered the WWF and I fell in love for professional wrestling largely because of Terry Bollea because of Hulk Hogan. So it's not that easy to distance myself from something that has meant so much to me, which is why some of you wonder sometimes why I still bother doing this, even if I don't enjoy the product, even if I don't seem to love professional wrestling as much, is because deep, deep down, it is such a huge part of who I am my identity, and it has been so important to me for over 30 years and has brought me some of the biggest elements of happiness and good feelings that anything ever has. And all of that, once again, ties back into Hulk Hogan. So I can't just sit there and say, F off. Screw you. The dude's been too important to my life. He's meant too much to me personally. Because so many good things happen because of professional wrestling for me. 
I can't just completely and totally turn my back on that. And that could be loyalty to a fault. That could be whatever the hell you want to call it. So I could still be bothered by what the dude said. And I always have been and will continue to be. And I haven't gotten there yet to where I can truly, fully forgive him for it. And I most certainly will never forget it. But, but if he is serious about taking this and making this a teachable moment, not just for himself, but others, and doing good out of it, then who am I to object? And who am I to say otherwise about it? I do make question with a guy like Hulk Hogan, who has been a serial BSer for so many decades of his life, that he's just BSing because he wants people to love him and make himself feel good about what happened again. There's a lot of evidence pointing to just that. I will choose to judge him on the actions of what he does and what he says going forward and the seriousness and veracity of how he follows through or ultimately doesn't follow through. Am I giddy that the WWE would bring him back? No. Mm -mm. But I've seen people compare this to Chris Benoit saying racist crap versus allegedly killing your wife and your son. That's not comparable. Give me a break. Again, when it comes to the WWE, they will still proudly display that the president, who's been accused of many things and is some of those things, he's in their Hall of Fame. What makes Hulk Hogan so much worse? Most people rationally, reasonably believe that Jimmy Superfly Snuka had a primary hand in the death of Nancy Argentino all those years back in 1983 in that hotel room. But yet he was in their Hall of Fame and he was celebrated for years. And Vince knows damn good and well he did a lot to try and help cover that crap up and sweep it under the rug. Pat Patterson was accused multiple times of improprieties in a variety of different ways with the boys. And yet he's in the Hall of Fame and we celebrate him. Stone Cold Steve Austin is a woman beater. Mike Tyson, a convicted rapist. The company not only has them in their Hall of Fame, they celebrate them and talk about their greatness and their legacy. I'm sorry, but as bad and serious as I will always take racism, it is not worse than beating a woman or raping somebody. I'm sorry, there has to be some level of hierarchy of priorities here. There has to be. And if those guys could be in, why can't he? You don't have to like it. That's fine. And I'm with you. If you don't like it, cool. Completely understandable. I wish it's one of those things where I could be really, really happy that Hulk Hogan's back of the fold. But again, I'm torn and conflicted. Because the truth is, I haven't gotten to a point where I can fully forgive. And I most certainly will never forget. But I can't turn my back on all the positive things that have happened because of professional wrestling that all tie back to Hulk Hogan. If nothing else, I want to be able to see Hogan do good out of this going forward. And I'm glad ultimately that WWE and Hogan were able to come to terms and do some type of reconciliation to make sure that this happened before it was too late. We've seen that happen so many times with this company and other wrestlers over the years where they don't reconcile and they don't come to terms and get to some level of peace and it's too late. I'm just glad that it's not too late. And it'll be up to Terry Bollea how he chooses to write the last remaining chapters of his life. And I hope he makes them really good. And if he squanders this chance, then I have no sympathy for him whatsoever and whatever happens, happens. But I will still give him that chance because as much as I might want to, and as much as I might try, he's been too important and meant too much to me for far too many years for me to give up on him now.